Hello again everybody, I just wanted to apologise for the delay in upload, it's been a busy week, I'm still studying my exams and I've had four exams this week. I'll be back to the usual upload schedule every couple of days though, so don't worry about it. And today we are talking about megalithic Siberian ruins. Now on these ancient maps you can see that there are plenty of cities marked on the, the territory of Siberia, however we are told by modern historians that Siberia was not developed until after the conquest of Ermac. That makes these sounds such uh, these cities such as Viande, Samoide, uh, Samoide again. That makes these cities a wee bit hard to explain from a mainstream perspective. We're going to take a look at a couple of megalithic ruins today that maybe maybe gives a wee bit of clues to what happened in this territory. <laughs> Like I said everybody, we are looking at megalithic Siberian ruins and we're just jumping straight in. These pictures I have not really got a source for but they are located in the Siberian territory and straight off the bat you can see what looks like worked blocks. That right there is almost certainly a decorative block of some variety. So again, this is an oblast territory and we will see this through all these photos of Siberian territories and that is these giant megalithic blocks which are almost impossible to determine them from natural causes and are almost certainly man-made. Again this is in a blast and we can see these giant rectangular blocks. They are referred to in Russia as stone tents and this is the Amur pillars and we can see again this, this giant almost perfectly square slab this is probably been the, the site of an ancient wall. We can see again these, these sharp cuts, sharp corners and what looks like blocks and these Amur pillars as they're known. And at the top what looks pretty much like uh, drill marks and what mainstream sources would refer to as erosion but could also be the traces of tool marks. Again this is at the site of the Amur pillars and if that isn't an obelisk, then I do not know what is. But once again, I would like to remind you that this territory was supposedly not developed until after the conquest of Ermac. We will see this in nearly every single site that we look at, and it's these basins on top of these giant megalithic rock monuments, or walls. And this is what the armour pillars looks like from afar and just to give you a wee, bit of, a wee bit of relativity here, there is a couple of people. So the size of these megalithic blocks is absolutely outstanding. And you can see why mainstream mainstream sources have to deny them and claim that they are natural because they, they would absolutely blow any other form of obelisk or megalithic block out of the water. Now, Siberia historians claim had a relatively low population density for pretty much the whole of human history until again after the conquest or what mainstream sources call the exploration of Siberia by Yermak. Now this took place in the 17th century so really we shouldn't be seeing any any sites that, that display inhabited civilization prior to that. Mainstream sources claim that the settlers of Siberia prior to the development of Siberia were nomadic settlers with no structures and no traces left behind of their civilization bar trinkets. These giant megalithic walls tell another story. This is the Anu Pillars and I think this is just outside Chelyabinsk and again completely reminiscent of a, a giant ancient wall. This is the Arakan Shihan Peninsula and again this is next to Chelyabinsk we see in almost every single one of these areas the, the size of these blocks is absolutely staggering ranging from 40 tons to thou thousands in some cases and again in this Arakul Shihan area there are these bowls on top of the rocks whose purpose we can only guess at but I'm sure we've all watched Lord of the Rings and noticed the, the flame towers on top of the, the mountains which these are almost exactly reminiscent of 
the size of these blocks is absolutely staggering however to describe that as looking like anything other than a wall would be dishonest and again the same area Arakul Shihan and the process of weathering that would have made every single one of these sites, these megalithic sites, look exactly like flat slabs laid one on top of each other is, is beyond me. Especially just rising out of the, the mountain range like that. Now these bowls are almost undeniably worked by man. They, they, there is very few, few types of geological erosion which would explain these. And then taking into account with the fact that we will see these repeated numerous times over these examples. It's, it's almost definite that these were worked by man at some point in the past. Again the same area, just to give you a wee bit of perspective on the size of these, these megalithic blocks and again the size of these basins. They are, they are fairly large. You could, you could easily sit inside them. The same area, I think we've actually seen that photo. Now this is a relatively famous area for rock climbers known as the Devil's Hill Fort. And it is named as such because the local rumour is that it was a structure erected by Satan himself, who became angry and scattered it, leaving only the remains of this wall. And again we see what looks like these vast stone slabs. However, at the bottom, the, the traces of the, the artificial activity are a wee bit more apparent. And I don't know if nature could quite precisely replicate that angle there. Again, this is just adjacent to the, the Devil's Hill Fort. These are known as the Small Devil's Rocks, which to me just looks like another part of a giant ruined wall. And at the same time, we also have engravings. <laughs> I kind of quite make out what that's supposed to look like there. And we see areas that natural processes of weather and, and erosion seem a, a wee bit out of reach. With these, with these grottos, which is all you can sort of describe them as. Again, these are these stone tents, these flat slabs laid on top of each other, which, if you can wrap your mind around it, you will, you will see many examples which are pretty convincing to say that this is the way that these ancient people built their megalithic walls, or their megalithic structures. Now, the founder of the Ural Science Society in the 19th century was actually quoted as saying, are these not the remnants of cyclopean structures of a great ancient people? And again, to describe them as looking like anything other than blocks would be dishonest. Especially at these lower areas, the, the, the angles on some of these are completely unnatural. Still the Devil's Hill Fort, but to me, it looks like an extremely hard up, an extremely weathered and worn ancient wall, megalithic wall. And again, there's these blocks that are, are fairly well preserved at the bottom. I think this is still the Chelyabinsk area, but there's that decorative block again. And almost perfectly square blocks. These are the remains of ancient, ancient stairs. And again, there's the, the grottos. We'll see a couple more of these grottos as we, we look at other photos. These are just some that I collected in the area prior to compiling this video. And to deny that they, they look like massive blocks placed on top of each other is, is impossible. The, the, the tooling that would have went into creating these and, and actually getting them into place was must have been outstanding. How they've done it is it boggles the mind, especially given that the technology that we attribute to them. Just a, cu a couple of carvings, I think to me that looks a bit like a goat. But this is in an area that, that mainstream sources claim was n not developed prior to the 17th century. We'll see this later on. Again, many of these massive stone slabs and if you if you think about the weight of that, that's in the excess of thirty, forty tons it must be. Same style as the others, just a bit larger. And we'll see again we'll see these later on, but the size of these boggles the mind. Look at that in front of it is a tree. There is a man stood next to it. Now these must be hundreds, hundreds of tons. 
if not close to the thousands. And there is the angle on these such blocks. It is almost definitely a wall. Or a structure. Now this is Gornaya Shoria and it is located south of the Atoll mountain range and it has mainstream scientists working overtime to try and describe this via natural perspective because what we are looking at is clearly the remains of a vast ancient wall however mainstream sources do not want to describe it as such now it was under study in 1991 but with the fall of the Soviet Union that study was abandoned and it has since been unable to secure enough funding to be studied again but this is just one of the many areas in Siberia that speak a history that mainstream sources do not want to talk about. Because the tolerances as we've seen between these massive ancient blocks is, is staggering and the size of the blocks themselves is absolutely mind blowing. Now this is Gornaya Sharia in Siberia and if you compare this to the stone of the pregnant woman in Baalbek, I think, I think this one's a bit bigger. And the level of workmanship, especially after what we can consider a, a, a fairly destructive set of years, a, a, fairly, a fairly hard period of time in which these blocks have withstood wars and battles and destruction by the elements, weathering, fatigue, they, they've, they've fared fairly, fairly decently. And you can see the size of the obelisk that they cut was, was again, these are in the thousands of the tons. This is Kedrove Island, uh, Cedar Island in English, because of the amount of, of cedar trees that grow on it. And we can always see these signs of tulans on these ancient megalith what, what mainstream sources claim are megalithic rocks. However, megalithic rocks do not have so many signs of tulans and do not look exactly like ancient walls. Explaining that from a natural perspective to me seems difficult to impossible. As you can see, I don't know, did that get struck by a, a perfectly symmetrical portion of lightning? lightning? I think it was it was cleaved in half by tools. This is the Cacus megaliths as they are known. And again, these are mere stone tents. You can see that they are completely separated from block to block. But to describe them as, as artificial, scientists would have to completely rewrite modern history, or at least the history of Siberia. However, again, how nature replicates the angles is beyond me. Now that is the angles that we find inside blocks such as these. Again, remnants of a, a, a vast ancient structure that used to sit on the edge of this cliff here. The, the size of the blocks to, to have raised them to the height of, well there's a person, so two four, five, five metres sometimes higher in some areas would it would have required some machinery I don't know I don't know how strong these ancient people were but to, to raise blocks the size of that in the excess of tens of tons seems impossible with the technology that we, we say that they had this is Kolmya megaliths and again the amount of megaliths in Siberia alone should tell you a wee bit of this story but looking at these massive ancient blocks should tell you another portion. And a lot of these areas feature sites such as this which look exactly like weed grottos or dwellings or tunnels. Now this Kolmya Megaliths area was actually, the local rumours say it was built by the Chud people. Now when the Chud people seen invaders coming into their lands they escaped with all their wealth into these ancient tunnels that the, the local people say still exist in the area. Now this is the Krasnoyarsk Pillars in the Southern Urals. And again, the size of these, these megaliths are absolutely staggering. This one again is it's obviously in the thousands of the tons. And we'll see they look extremely bizarre. And I would venture to say that these are ones that have perhaps been struck a wee bit harder by, by some of these... these uh, extremely destructive weaponry that was used. As I've mentioned in some of my other videos we've seen quite conclusive evidence that they were able to melt blocks and these unnatural looking objects might just be more melted structures 
because even at the top of these ones we see the same basins or bowls and they are made up of the same stone 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 slabs however these ones look f far more eroded especially at the top however even looking at these Krasny Krasnoyarsk pillars to say they look natural would be dishonest they look they look absolutely bizarre this is Kruglitsa mountain this is 15 kilometers outside the Chelyabinsk now what we are looking at here is granite these are massive granite slabs and the angles on them look completely artificial and in some cases we can still see what look, looks like cutting marks as opposed to evidence of weather or erosion and I don't know how nature manages to pull off a right angle quite like that so this is Lake Shaitansko, which translates to, to Lake Satan. And it's been the site of 16 archaeological digs over the years. The last 20 years have led to 16 archaeological digs. And they have uncovered up to a, 160 different bronze objects, the burial of a shaman. And the reason they, they, they had so many digs in this area was because of the local legends of the area. Again, that it was the home to these Chud people. And it looked like these Chud people had a, a habit of living within the rock themselves. But like the, the other area that we spoke about, when, when the invaders came into the land, the Chud people escaped to the tunnels. And again, even in Lake Shaitansko, we have these basins on top of these massive megalithic rocks. Which, in this case, mainstream sources have tried to say was an ancient nomadic altar because the remains on this site are so so obvious that mainstream sources have had to attribute the area to an, a vast ancient temple or sanctuary that they the, even even mainstream sources claim existed for thousands of years now i don't know any nomadic site that exists for any any set of years never mind thousands and this area again shows these telltale signs of being worked because that looks completely unnatural. It's just a, a vast ancient site that has been toppled, flattened, and then eroded by, by weapons and weathering. Because the tools that would be required, you're, you're not doing that by scraping with another stone. You're not doing that with the technology that we, we say that they had. And to call that anything other than an entranceway would, would be mad. That almost is is almost certainly artificial, and the question mainstream mainstream sources don't want to don't want to answer is how they raised megaliths in the excess of, of tens of tons like this one. And everywhere we look in Siberia, we see the remnants of these ancient cities that were featured on these these maps, these same maps that featured Tartaria, Liuskinye rocks again, another another vast ancient wall. And you can see the separations between these blocks in almost every single one. And they take on nearly a uniform shape. And that's what it looks like from an aerial view. Again, that is almost certainly a wall. Sitting at the bottom is the, the remains of some of the destroyed portions. And you can see how these stone slabs or stone tents, as they're called in Russia, were made up. This is Mount Pidan. This is a wee bit further north in Siberia, and that looks to me completely, completely artificial. And in the area again, we see these these massive traces of, of cutting marks all the way along. These parallel lines, these intersecting lines, cut deep within the rock. And I don't know how anybody can claim that that is anything other than an ancient wall. The only the only problem is it's in an area that, that historians claim was not settled, was not developed. However, I, I have no idea how they can get away with, with looking us in the eye and telling us that that is anything other than a wall. Same area, Mount Pidan, and we have blocks like this. We can only guess as to their function these days. 
but we can easily conclude that they are not natural. And in the area you can see the scattered remains of what was once there. The vast amount of these rocks on the ground tell you just how just how developed this area was. And just how large the scale of the destruction was. Because it, everywhere we see almost the same site in Siberia. This is still Mount Pidan. Again, remains of another wall. <laughs> look at the lines on here, look at the angles, look at the, the way that these blocks cut in. The angles are almost perfectly 90 degrees. Now just to give you an idea of what the Siberian territories look like from there, if this does not look like the site of bombardment to you, then I, I don't know what else to tell you. I don't know why you're watching these videos because this this right here explains the level of destruction that we are seeing. We are seeing what was probably a well-developed area, a technologically advanced area that served as, as if not a naval, a naval point of strategic interest or some form of strategic interest, a capital that, that needed to be erased. Either that or the technological development involved in the structures that were situated here just needed to be completely and utterly wiped out. Now you will see this along nearly ev every single northern coast in the entire world, however especially in Eurasia and Alaska. And it is everywhere, absolutely staggering the, the the size of this destruction. It's a landscape that is is completely foreign looking to me. It looks like an alien landscape, and I, I have no idea how geologists explain it. I, in fact, I do have looked it up, but the the explanation is just completely and utterly inadequate for this this level of obvious destruction. And I will show you in one second. This is Alaska, and like I said, it carries over even to Alaska. However, in Alaska, it takes the shape of these bizarre perpendicular lines which to me looks like a direction of attack how how the hell geologists explain that these all took on the exact same shape following the exact same, exact same direction I mean they are almost parallel is beyond me it gets even more obvious here look at that every single one of them is, is travelling in the exact same direction and if you zoom into the centre of some of them It must have been a better map service. If you look on Google Maps, I think you can see in the centre of them almost perfectly straight lines. Now these aerial images that I just shown you might go a wee bit a wee bit of a way to explain how such giant megalithic structures were destroyed. Again, this is Mount Shaman in Siberia, and mainstream sources would tell you that this was a completely natural site that you are looking at. Again, this is. Uh, that one's the wrong one. I got that in the wrong folder. Mount Mount Shoria this time in Siberia, and again the size of this megalithic block is absolutely staggering. There is a reason that mainstream sources have to deny this. And again, if you, if you took into account that Siberia was home of the the greatest megalithic monuments that made the pyramids and and Stonehenge pale in comparison, that's a, a, a rewriting of history right there. We see that, that same megalithic block we looked at earlier, and it is absolutely huge. These are the, the, the grottos that I was speaking about. We will see more of these over, over the rest of Siberia. But the, the size of these blocks is absolutely outstanding. If you compare some people next to it, you can see that they're, they are sometimes standing 20-25 metres high. So the Pepsi whale this time and these wells were again attributed to the Chud people. A lot of, a lot of what's going on in Siberia has been attributed to the Chud people. By by the locals at least, the Chud people and mainstream historians featured very rarely. They were the, the precursors to the Finns, I think mainstream historians say that they were the Chudsky. But to look at the, the absolute geometric perfectness of that, that circle is outstanding. Now the, the Pipesy wells were actually the site of mines. So it's a mining site. This, what we are looking at here, is not a well. It was supposedly used in the enrichment of iron ore. Now, one of the wells, I think I've got a photo of it. One of the mines, sorry. I think this is the entrance to it. Reached a depth of 100, 130 metres underground. One of these mines. Now, we can see the people that created these these sites, these these iron iron ore enrichment areas, were que clearly quite quite developed. This is the Pidan Mountain again, I think we spoke about this previously, but bare evidence is what we are looking at is just the remains of a giant megalithic wall. Again, some of the blocks here are absolutely staggering. 
the corner on that is, is a, a game changer as far as I'm concerned. The angles uh, angles on that are, are only only available when when mankind has had his hands on it. Just an, an obvious sight, really. We don't need anybody to tell us what this is because it is very clearly a wall. So they've got a couple of doubles doublers in here. P down mountain again. We are looking at absolutely perfectly pe pe perpendicular parallel lines. Uh, yeah, absolutely parallel lines. Perpendicular. And we'll see there. These markings along the, edge of the edges of these blocks again look completely artificial. I'm assuming some form of, some form of object slotted in here. Some iron railings, iron bar. Who knows? Pope of Island. Now this is the Salkachi River, which is a fairly small river in Russia, but it is the site of quite a few megalithic objects, and the site of blocks such as these. Now the people that, that took this photo, actually the researchers that took this photo went inside and found that that inside area in here was perfectly flat. You can see the angle of the edge here. From here to the other side was absolutely perfectly polished flat. And it was the inside of, of this object here. What well, was also there, and even locals speak of this, is this iron pin that's embedded in the side of this object, which appears to be resistant to rust. Completely resistant to rust, and you can tell it's not rusted because the rock has no oxidation on it. So it's a, another, another alloy that we do not have today, which is completely and utterly impervious to any form of rust. The Seven Brothers, this looks like the Devil's Hill, Hill Fort that we've seen earlier, but this is a separate site. This is 30 kilometres away, and I believe what we are looking at is just the, the other side of the wall. Because as you can see, it looks almost exactly the same. And I don't, I don't know how any geologist can look at you with a straight face and tell you that this is a natural site. This raises out of the ground completely, completely out of the blue. It has a flat slope of grass at either side. And then just this this massive m megalithic wall. And that's the Seven Brothers. Now, I, I think I have this one labelled in another photo, but this is another one of these grottos that we see. And if you look at the size of that, that block on top, we will see it in another photo. It's, it's in the excess of 20 tonnes, so how they raised that on top of that was was beyond me. Southern Urals again, there's there's that wall that we've seen earlier. Seen these. So this is Ergaki. Now this is what is called the Stone City. Again we see the remains of a, a, a giant wall with these, these stone slabs that are laid on top of each other. However, this one looks a, a bit more melted or weathered than the others. Indeed it is complete with scotch marks. What I thought was interesting here and we have seen it in a couple of other other areas is is these completely smooth pitted bits are, are removed and again I don't know if you can see it in here the ridges are lined with them now is it possible that uh, an ancient people were able to build with blocks of this size and if they were how, how developed was this area that the, the ruins would, would lead to this amount of blocks if you can see in the background that block there, yeah, I mean we are we are talking about a completely artificial area. There are the pitted objects again. How how you would explain that through natural geology, I do not know. It's beginning to look like the inside of some structure. The collapsed road blocks along the middle potentially being the roof. And that that face there almost looks polished again. You can see that that's that has been worked. As is that. As is that. And the angles on this, this looks like an intersection. But we would be led to believe by main, mainstream sources that this was artificial. Despite what looks to me like the the marks they are cutting disc.
Ergaki stones it again, but just to give you an idea of uh, how this might have been the ruins of an ancient structure, there, there would be the window. We see what looks like giant megalithic walls all, all over the, the Siberian territory, but every single one of them has been given a natural explanation. Because when you have a megalithic wall that makes the, the Great Wall of China look absolutely minuscule in comparison, that's what you do, you, you cover up the history. Of it. Still Stone City Argaki. And again, look at the angles between these, these giant vast walls. This is on the River Iset, the Stone Gate River. And you can see this, the, the size of this object here, there's, there's some people, so that is maybe 30, 40 metres. However, the angle on the inside there is almost perfectly right angled again, but we can only, only ponder as to how it ended up toppled on its side like this. There it is for across the river. And this is scenery that, that we do not see anywhere else in the world. Exclusively in Siberia. An, an area with, with barely a thousand years of history according to mainstream sources. This is Lake Shartash again. Like I said, the entirety of Siberia is covered with these and these ones also have these cir circular depressions eroded or carved into the rocks. This is apparently this was this was built by the the ancient people or as as the locals called the ancient people people from the 19th century. However, it looks a wee bit a wee bit more modern than that to me. But this here definitely does not. This is another massive megalithic wall, and that is the stone tents on Lake Shartash. And you can almost see with these steps here how. How there have been a set of older steps in the area, they have just been replaced by these more modern ones. And then you get to the wall, and it, again with every single one of these walls there is massive meg megalithic blocks at the bottom that looks like they've just toppled down for above. Whenever, whenever whatever happened it destroyed all of this, these rocks toppled in. This is found in the Taimir Peninsula, and we, we see what what looks like the remains of two massive obelisks or pillars and these obelisks are built up with, with giant blocks, tens of tons, twenty tons and if you google the time your peninsula and have a look for yourself or go on google maps you will see this area I, I would have to make a separate video just for the time your peninsula it is absolutely chock full of places like that now this is Terry Cole now this one they, they had no way explaining as anything other than the remains of a fortress. Now this is a lake in the, the southern Siberia, south Siberia, and it is what historians are claiming was the remains of an Urgur settlement, or Urgur, however you say it. Some of the walls today still reach 8 metres in height. Now the fortress itself on the, the Terrakol Lake is called the Porbazine Fortress. And this is even claimed by mainstream historians to have been the site of an ancient reservoir. This this lake here is as mainstream historians claim that this itself is artificial, as there is a dark stripe that runs along the edge of the lake, and you can see it on radar, and it is almost perfectly flat and perfectly straight. But on the island itself, this Porbagine fortress, this stone fortress that was apparently built by a people that didn't dwell in the area for for any length of time at all. Now, another one of these, these legends that claim people escaped into tunnels, the Urgiros apparently jumped into the tunnels and they once again took their wealth with them, which seems to be a recurring story in ancient Siberian cities. And we can see the remains of, of the blocks that they used to make these structures are again on the large side, which were reminiscent of what we've seen previously. I believe that this, especially given the area and the vicinity and the water, uh, it has probably been the remains of a, a, an ancient star fort. And this has probably been one of the, the petals of the flower. A couple of older photos, and it's in black and white, but I'll, I'll get anybody out there that can guess the colour of the blocks, 10 points. 
This is the Isaac Lake again, or Isaac River, and this is the Isaac Megalith Park. And you can see the size of these blocks makes makes Stonehenge it absolutely dwarfs Stonehenge. And on the top again are these stone basins. However, next to this one is a giant a giant cutting mark. The same megalith park, but look at the size of that, that obelisk there. It appears these ancient people built on a scale that is that is not often copied or or uh, comparable to anything we do nowadays. And the remains uh, indeed of this, this area are so vast that they, they, they actually boggle the mind. And mainstream sources claim this, this entire site, everything we have seen, is nothing but the, the processing natural erosion and weathering. You can see these huge blocks, ten, tens of twenties of tons, laid, laid absolutely precisely on top of each other. And this, I uh, still the eyes at Megalith Park, but again, the, ho the Holy Siberia is covered in these these sites. This this video could easily have been been forty, fifty. It could have been an hour and a half long, because we find sites such as Vera Island, again Chelyabinsk. How many of these have been in Chelyabinsk? These these grottos, c obviously artificial, but how how they laid this slab on top that that weighs tens of tons without any tools, without any lifting machinery. Mainstream historians have no choice but to ignore it. Now, does the inside of this structure no look like the inside of this artificial structure? No, no, look strikingly similar to the what mainstream historians are calling natural structures that we've just been looking at. Also, on Vera Island in Chelyabinsk is this, which at one point must have looked absolutely staggering. We can only guess as to what it was, what it was really. And again, the, the the objects here these are these are circles that have been engraved into this, or carved into this, prior to it being toppled and destroyed. And you can see the the, the counterpart on the here. I believe that's probably how they've they've split this rock. V-shaped megaliths. Now the that is clearly the the the, the marker tool. Now the tool that created that must have been absolutely huge because that line is perfectly straight, that is at least an inch thick and it goes deep. Yet mainstream ma mainstream sources didn't give us any explanation for the technology such as this. They they literally have zero explanation for that. That is clearly not the result of the artificial processes. So what was it? And if the, the, the people that had the technology to do this they, they, they didn't just do this one singular object, what else did they build? The people that, that cut rocks like this. It's been walls on the scale of this. The Zaogierny Ridge, again in the northern Urals this time. But this is what they built. They built these absolutely giant <laughs> megalithic structures. And again, a lot of these areas at one point when the, the, the Soviet Union was in power they, they, they were actively researched. The the true history might not have came out, but they were they were at the, the, the site archaeological digs and what we do find from them is items such as these and these are crystals. Both of these objects are crystals and again these objects themselves are crystals and the explanation we have for these engravings because of how precise they are, mainstream mainstream sources tell us that they, they resemble the, the marks of laser etching. And this is just some of thousands of objects that have been found in Siberia. However, the history of Siberia does not match what we are seeing there today. Now, this was just a quick video. I'll, I'll have plenty of my videos on Siberia in the future. But I just wanted to get these megalithic ruins out of the way because no way people have seen these in the West. And they are absolutely staggering. We talk about Stonehenge, we, we, we talk about the pyramids, we talk about a lot of these megalithic sites. And Siberia is often left out that 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 conversation. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Until the next one, peace. Cheers.